microphone check. Let's start this thing up. In, all good. Mic check. Uh, about to start this thing up in three, two, one. Welcome back to the Comic Book Bullies. We're nerds, the new bully. I'm your host Leroy, aka the Deviant, uh, with my co-host. This is Eli, aka Killer Kadugan. Okay, I don't know what that means, but we're gonna go with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're back with another episode, and yeah, this is uh, Eli. It feels like we are six months into January. I mean, in the 2020, but we only finished one month. So like January mm-hmm. took forever to end. Uh, oh yeah. Hopefully, if that's a precursor of what we have to look forward into in 2020, just take me back to 2019. I'm done with this shit. You know, it was too yeah, much. Yeah, it's been a rough month. It's been a rough month. Now, I'm still not over Kobe yet, man. <laughs> I'm yeah, still not just... over. I'm still not over Neil Pert. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, like, damn, this shit hurt, man. And we got to go through the rest of it. Like, it, it's like that was round one. We got 11 more to go. So I'm like, fuck, man. You know what? I started realizing. Uh, there's a reason why nerds and 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 like sports fans have this disconnect. Because, like I said, we we like Superman, Batman, all that good shit like that. That's fun. But sports fans aren't really into this shit like that because they look at the sports athletes as their as their superheroes. You yeah. know, basically they can do shit that they can't do other than mortal men or like that. And I think that's when Kobe died. That's why a lot of you know uh, sports fans you know got hurt over there because for them it's like when Tony Stark died, except you know he's a real person. You know. Yeah. Kind of feel like that. Let me say, I guess we're going to just talk about sports for a quick second because obviously the biggest TV programming event that happens every single year happens tonight, and that was the Super Bowl. Uh, obviously, you didn't watch it. I did not. I was busy watching Sabrina. <laughs> wow. You, I, I thought nobody could get worse than Comic Cast, but you just went even worse than that. Oh, yeah. Fuck they yeah. Just recorded I keep, I while keeps the... it real, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> they recorded while the Super Bowl was happening. I'm like, really? Yeah. I'm like, fuck the Super Bowl, Sabrina, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this podcast that endorsed the views points of Eli. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you decided to watch. Super, was it was it worth it? I guess. It's cool. I mean, I I dig I dig the Sabrina shows. I dig I dig the art, the Riverdale, and all that shit. Wait, isn't it on Netflix? It's on Netflix. What yeah. the hell, man? You act like it was live TV or something. <laughs> no, well, I, I, it's the new season. I haven't. I just started watching. The, I, 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 I get it. I get it. It's Netflix, so you have to watch it before everybody else spoils the shit out of it. So yeah, yeah, it's it's cool that it's on Netflix and you can watch it anytime, but you really can't watch it anytime. My kid likes it. Like we started watching it the other night, and then I went. I, I watched like a couple episodes and went to bed, and then he fucking watched the rest of the season on me. Like, well, <laughs> fuck her, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> so now, you're, now you don't have to worry about the internet. You have to worry about your own household spoiling it for you. Yeah, so I'm like five episodes in. I got a few more. I was like three more to go. So, you know. Wow, that is really, that is really fucked up. I um, will say this, though. I They butchered It's Tricky by Run DMC. I had to get up and leave. <laughs> uh, did Run DMC not sing it or rap it? No, it was a cheerleading squad. And I was like, okay, I can't, I can't abide. Oh, it was like with that movie. Oh. Bring it on! With Pretty Kristen much, Dirt started yeah. singing. Yeah, oh. the cheerleading squad started doing it's tricky, and I was like, "Yeah, no." <laughs> <laughs> Some things you just can't unhear. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can deal with all the satanic imagery and all that blasphemy, but mm-hmm. this is just too much. That's just <laughs> evil right there. <laughs> they just did. Pure evil. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's that's cool. Uh, just to let you know, even though it doesn't seem like really give a shit. Uh. The Kansas City Chiefs won. That's what I hear. Yeah, they won. Um, so, you're, so you're wrong. You're you're I'm mad. Not thing was wrong. I'm wrong. Madden you was gotta, wrong. You got to eat a burger or something. I got to right? ta- Taco Tuesday or something like that. His thing, Eli, his thing. Okay. Now, up until six minutes into the fourth quarter, everything Madden said was correct. Really? They were winning by like 54 to 20 It, it went like 54, but it was like, like a very <laughs> low score game. It was like 20-something to 10. You know, uh, San Francisco's... Uh, like def- defense was just shutting him down. Mahomes couldn't, Mahomes couldn't do anything. Everything he was throwing was getting intercepted. He was getting sacked left and right. I'm like, that's exactly what Madden said. Okay. Then all of a sudden, it's like he just went into the matrix or some shit. Like he started to believe and went to another zone. And then all of a sudden, nothing they did worked. They couldn't sack him anymore. They were almost getting to sack him. He was out running everybody on the field. He was throwing like these insane bombs. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? He did all that shit like in six minutes. And then they won the game. Everybody was like, what? So, 
up until then, the Super Bowl was pretty boring to like the last six minutes. I thought that was pretty interesting. So, well, yeah. I, I, I turned it on during the halftime show and I saw it was like tied 10 to 10. I'm like, okay, this sounds like a boring ass game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it really was because of like it was high defense. They couldn't do anything with them. It looked like they were yeah. going to run away with it. But then all of a sudden, the last six minutes, he flipped a switch. That's what it seemed like. You know, like I said, I don't have a dog in a fight either way. It was just funny to just see how he flipped a switch on that. So, yeah. um, they won. Uh, your boy, it's President Donald Trump, boy. Donald Trump. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> congratulated them. Congratulated the Kansas City Chiefs. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. The state of Kansas. <laughs> the state of Kansas. This dumbass doesn't know that Kansas City is in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> but that's our president. It's and we'll like be that the next Sim- four years. A- Abe on The Simpsons, the grandpa, he's like, I'll be deep in the cold, cold ground before I recognize Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> what a world we live in, man. Uh, okay. So, yeah. That's oh, they that. don't give a His followers still, they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. Like I said, he's going to be a president in the four years. Who cares? Yeah. Um, President for life, yo. We ain't getting rid of him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Watchmen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's our president for life, man. <laughs> or at yeah. least until civilization ends, whichever comes first. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. He's the last president we'll see, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, what about commercials? Any commercials you saw? Um, I Well, just online. The Gomer sent us the Marvel shit. We're going to talk about that later on. And then, that that and then the to... Jason, I, I saw that Jason Momoa. Uh, trail, or you just made, I'm glad you made me watch that because I would have had no idea what the fuck you were talking about. So I'm glad yeah. I sat and watched that. That shit was funny as hell. It was funny. <laughs> it, it did. It, I think that was an old Simpsons joke. Because uh-huh. I think they did the same joke on Schwarzenegger. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he took it like he went home and took off his or like McBain or whatever was it McBain or whatever? I think yeah, that's what, it was McBain. Not Mc, honestly, I think it was McBain. Right? He was like, no one must ever know. You know some <laughs> shit like that. So I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, other than that one, I, I didn't see any other uh commercial that jumped out at me. Yeah, well, I didn't like I said, I didn't even watch the game, so I don't even know. Um, I saw some of the trailers popping up online, you know, like the new the like the TV spot for like the new Black Widow uh, trailer. Yeah, same shit. It was like yeah, yeah. I was like, they, they don't need to show me any more of that. I already know what I'm getting. So. Yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman did pop up, but she didn't show up in her own trailer. She showed up like in other people's trailers. Like she oh, no showed up shit. in a. A uh, tiny commercial or something. Oh yeah, and then it comes. Not it comes that night. What's that? The 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 fucking monster movie with the quiet quiet place. Quiet place. Okay. I saw yeah. that. I never that, saw that the first was, one. Oh, that's all right. It's it's fine. But the sequel looked cool. Like what they showed looked pretty cool with the monster attacking the cop and shit. And there must be a flashback of when the shit went down. So. And um, no no spoilers. I know it's a year old movie, but yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the trailer's full of shit of it too, but yeah, okay. So I'm pretty sure we'll they'll re-air some trailers that probably didn't, you know, pass by didn't pay attention to it. Like you said, the only thing I was looking for was the Marvel shit. I was thinking they were gonna drop an Eternals trailer. Because that movie does oh. come out this year also, but they gave us nothing on that. So Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because we still know nothing about the movie. I guess we have to wait till Comic Con or some shit I like that. I bet you we're gonna get something by by by, by spring. By the oh, yeah, time we, Black we, Widow comes out, we're going to have some shit. Yeah, they, they're trying to hype up Black Widow first, and then they're probably attaching Turner's trailer to Black Widow or some shit. Yeah. We'll, we'll get it. You know, They they got to sell us this movie because I don't think anybody sold on that movie just yet. Yeah. Uh, oh, the halftime show. Everybody hated the halftime show. I watched the Eli. Yeah, it was all right. I, like I said, I flipped it on, and I saw all I saw was Shakira playing the drums. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck that shit. And I just... <laughs> <laughs> like you yeah. could have been in the Super Bowl doing it. Oh, like, what the hell? I, I, I that's not why I watched Shakira. <laughs> no, no, no. She had plenty of ass shaking in there. Oh, really? Because I didn't see no ass shaking. I there saw was her on, like twenty. Matter, matter of fact, matter of fact, they had that towards yeah. the end. J Lo and Shakira were both shaking their ass like towards the end of it. And I ain't gonna lie, Eli. Shakira had her. She had more jiggle with her yeah. shit. I can't stand J Lo. I I've been sick of J Lo for like twenty years. I mean. She, we don't even know why J Lo was even famous. She just, I, yeah, I can't stand. I, I I've hated her songs. I mean, she made a couple of movies that I thought were okay, but other than that, once she started singing and shit, I couldn't stand. But it. she I, can't she, sing. That's the thing. Yeah, like she can't I, sing at all. She's been played out for like decades with me. Every every like, song she did was like songs from the nineties. I'm surprised she's not sick of herself you know <laughs> she probably is but she's just like there and she was she felt like she was the headline of it like she like shakira like seems to be like a big i thought she was a bigger global star i thought you know 
She's more know. talented. Like I said, you, you said she sucked for playing the drums, but hell, she can play the drums. Well, it's not what I wanted to see. I I don't watch Shakira to play, watch her play drums. I, yeah, I want to see You're Ash. You're getting the whole show. Ash shaking and drums. I don't fucking care. I want to see Ass. I got her sitting behind a drum kit. <laughs> you I'm want like, her shaking this. Ass and drums at the same time? She's talented, but not that talented. Yeah, I had the house to myself. I'm like, sweet. I could <laughs> let let my balls hang out. Like, oh <laughs> shit, she's behind a drum set. Well, I am. <laughs> Back to Pornhub, it is. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, I, I thought the whole thing. It was fine. It was cool. It it felt like a, a not that I know of it, but it seemed like it was a Zumba class. You know, with all the pop music they were playing and shit like that. That's my thing. They were in Miami. They were trying to hop up. You know, do like a whole Hispanic crowd and shit like that. What the fuck was Pitbull? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you would think he would be there, you know. Is he from Miami? Yes, he is Miami. Okay, I didn't know. I so went I'm, to so, I'm so out of it. I don't know that shit. I, 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 went, I went to Florida one time. I went to my no. I went to Miami one time. I went to Miami. This I still like, live in like Florida. I lived in Hollywood, like right up, right outside of Fort Lauderdale. Oh, nice. Okay, so you get those crazy Florida man stories down there. Uh Florida is like the racist state of all time. <laughs> really. <laughs> It's it's hard to beat Mississippi. I uh, I remember driving through Mississippi and I was just kind of scared of all the like the Jesus signs. <laughs> <laughs> like, you are going to hell. Redeem like every billboard was a warning on repenting and <laughs> <laughs> In the Bible built. Yeah. But uh, but Florida like like everybody like even black people hate black people down there. <laughs> It just seemed like a, just a weird, like, Florida feels like another planet when I went down there. I don't know. Yeah. It just feels like it's different from everywhere else, you know? Yeah. Like, Haitians hate Jamaicans, and they hate Puerto Ricans, and they hate Cubans, and they, <laughs> <laughs> they all hate each other down there. <laughs> that's oh, that's what I got out of it. Maybe that's just a southern thing. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> is you right? But the, but the point I was trying to make when I went down to Miami, I turned the radio, nothing was playing but Pitbull. And every oh. single song had a Pitbull remix. Didn't okay. matter what it was. He was just on the third verse of everything. I'm like, they they really love Pitbull down there. So, I suppose, yeah. So why he wasn't on the halftime show, I was just like, that's a head scratcher. Like, J-Lo, why is she here? We have Pitbull. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, she's from the Bronx. Right, she's not even from Miami. <laughs> yeah. Or Florida at all, you know. Uh, <laughs> but that's any healer there. What else we talking about? That's the Super Bowl. Uh, okay, yeah. I celebrated my birthday this weekend. Well, this week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Comic Cast. They actually did do that fundraiser. They actually did PayPal me the money. Oh no shit. Yeah. So I used that for my birthday present. My birthday present. Uh, I didn't do club? anything. I didn't do anything that weekend. I mean that Wednesday. I, 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 matter of fact, I podcast with you guys. We all podcast. If you want to hear mm-hmm. some more of us, uh, chilling with other people, go listen to Comic Cast last uh episode. I don't even know if they have it up here or anything like it's that. Like but the fan fan roundtable or something. Yeah, it was fan oh, yeah. appreciation day or something like that. It was fun. Uh, but I got to celebrate this weekend. I was like, this weekend I'm going to celebrate my birthday. And what I did, I, I told you about that thing, right? Uh, basically, the Mississippi Symphonic Orchestra was down at like the the local playhouse down there, and they played pretty much the one through eight best songs of Star Wars. They were down there just playing the songs. Uh, I did go down there. I didn't know what to dress as, like I told you before, so I decided to just go in a three piece suit, all black and shit like that. Uh, oh, was so you, yeah. you didn't dress up? You didn't dress up as a Jawa? No, I, I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't know the formal attire. I didn't know what to wear to an event like this. You know, uh, it was date night. Then, then Eli, this is a tough sell for date night. <laughs> like, you want to go with me to a Star Wars symphony? <laughs> like, most women would be like, you know what, not gonna work. <laughs> you know, but the, the the date I had, she was actually pretty cool with. You know, like it's your birthday, I'll go. But the whole time, you could you could tell that she was just like, okay, how many more songs is it? <laughs> You know, okay, <laughs> four left, three left, and I'm just sitting here, just just nodding my head the whole time, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, In tears and shit. You're right. <laughs> this was so moving. Na, 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 na. <laughs> I'm lighting up like a, a a lighter, just waving my. <laughs> you don't bring a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> like just really into this shit. And she's like, you like you really like this shit, huh? Like a little, just a little. Uh, so yeah, I enjoyed myself. Uh, you, and then even when they, and I think I was a little bit too excited because, and now we're about to play Duel of Face. And then in my day, I was like, we're about to play it. They're about to play it. Like, calm your ass down. 
<laughs> and you can tell, like, right when people play, I just wanted to stay like, this is my shit. This is my shit. But I couldn't do it. You know, because it was formal attire. All I can do is just do the golf clap after they, after they finish. You well, what you could have did is before you went and saw it, played her that, uh, the Biggie, uh, the Biggie remix, that album. He, somebody made a remix of Biggie Smalls rapping over a bunch of Star Wars samples. That's a thing? Yeah, it's a whole album. I got to go find cool. this. I never knew about that. You got to send it to me. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, it's on. I can't. Uh, fuck. They do like Big Papa and like, you know, uh, you, you hear like, I, you know, I am your father. You know, they used to call me Big Papa. <laughs> <laughs> I am your father. I didn't even know that existed. Okay, I yeah, got to check that out. Yeah, it's basically a bunch of Star Wars music. Somebody puts hip hop beats to Star Wars music and put Biggie, Biggie rhymes over it. Okay, uh, definitely got to check yeah. that out. So, oh. In there, like I said, when you go to a, a symphony orchestra on Saturday night in the Playhouse watching Star Wars, I'm going to answer your question exactly what you think, Eli. Were there any other black people there? Oh, I I just assumed. It was Mississippi. I just <laughs> <laughs> I think I spotted two in the crowd. Oh. <laughs> but they looked at me just as shocked as I looked at them. They're like, what the fuck you doing here? There was nobody on the on, on the symphony? No black I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna answer that question for you. Okay, okay. I'm I'm glad you brought that up because at first I and because I looked, I looked like there any black people in the symphony, and I couldn't find any until they played this very specific song. And, and I'm a, the song they played was the Katina Band. The Katina. <laughs> at at Maz Eisen, you know what song I'm talking about? Yep. So yep. it was funny because before they did it, like they were playing all the songs stuff like that, and then all the whole thing went da- dark. They put the curtains down. You could see them moving things around, and then the pop up. Every single black person that was in the symphony was up front playing the Katina Band song. <laughs> I'm like, where'd you find any black people from to play this song? <laughs> but it's funny because the thing is, Eli, it's like like uh. When you hear the music, you pick up things you didn't notice before. Like, I never conner- c- uh, occurred to me that the Katina band from Mount Most Island song is just like this big band New Orleans brass song. That's all it is. When you put the connection okay. together, you can see it. Yeah. It was like, oh, damn. I mean, it's, yeah, you can't make the connection when you hear a bunch of aliens playing the song. But when you see a bunch of black people playing the song, then you make the connection. The throwing out beads and shit. <laughs> I mean, they might as well, cause I'm vit, cause I like I said, I'm from Mississippi. I'm next door to Louisiana. I've heard these big ba- uh, big brass songs play all the time. They come here to Mississippi and play all the time. So when they were playing it, and I saw them, I was like, I, that's all I could think about was just big brass brand from from New Orleans. I'm like, oh shit, that's where they got this from. You start making a connection, like, and that's yeah. the thing. and that's the thing, like, uh, the whole time they was playing the music, I was visualizing the movie. My day wasn't. They, did, they didn't have like the the movies playing or a screen playing anything. Or? No, I was expecting it, but it wasn't. I was, but I can imagine the whole time like Duel of Fates. You could just see it when they were playing like the uh the the Luke, not the Luke, the Leia and Han. You like you could just see that love story playing and shit like that. Oh, uh-huh. uh, oh, the one that jumped out at me first that I never caught before, Anakin's theme song and the prequel. Okay, so it's like this hopeful, upbeat song, stuff like that. But every now and then you hear a tweak of, you know, Darth Vader's Imperial March in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, that's pretty interesting. Matter of fact, I think the Imperial March was the only time she actually paid attention. <laughs> oh, I know that one. Like, of course she knows that one. <laughs> so, yeah, I had a good time. That was my birthday present. So, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that one. Uh, oh, and just the fact that it was just a live, live, that's the whole thing, live orchestra, because you had this, you don't know what's going to happen with live orchestra. I had really in tuned ears. I played trumpet for 10 years, so I can hear stuff like that. Heard a few messed up notes, things like that. The xylophone pair, player was a little bit too loud on a few of those songs. This is my thing. But it's live action. You know, you can't get that from a, from a, uh, from a recording. So, had a good time. Anything else? Oh, yeah, one more thing we're going to talk about, and we're going to move on from that. Uh, what do you think about this coronavirus? What do I think about it? Yeah. Sucks, well, man. I don't. I don't want to get it. <laughs> I mean, hopefully we don't. But <laughs> the way but, it's going. Uh, but I'm not too worried. I mean, there's like every other year where there's like a Chinese Asian flu coming out of there somewhere. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. If yeah, we didn't so- get if we didn't get Ebola, then I'm not worried about. <laughs> I mean, but was Ebola even a thing? Was it really a thing? I mean, it was. I mean, Ebola could fuck you up. I mean, I got a little worried when you know there was outbreaks and. Somebody, there was some, somebody actually got it here mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh shit, that ain't good. But then they contained it and I'm like, okay, but, uh, but there's, but Asian, there's an Asian flu. My daughter had a, 
was it the swine flu? Like back when that was a thing. Oh wow. Well, they think she had it because there was that it, when it was going around. Um, and then one day she just got sick and had this really high fever, and they just treated her like she did have it. Mm-hmm. So they gave her all the meds. They they basically treated her like she had it and gave her all the medicine and uh, you know the treatments for that. But that was scary because the people who are dying for that are it is it's always. I mean, at the time she was like maybe one, one or two. So I was worried. Um, cause that's who usually dies from it. It's usually old people or, or young children. Right. Don't have the immunity system built. Yeah. Time. So, yeah. So the deaths are, you know, even from this coronavirus, it's the deaths are like old people and kids. Cause yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, was it the, the swine flu, the, the bird flu, the H one N one. I mean, we have one of those every fucking other I'm just year, saying cause, because I, I saw on a news report the other day, like, they were cutting off, like, flights to China from America. You know, like, they, they think it's that serious now. Yeah. I, I mean, know. I heard about that. I heard, like, uh, yeah, like, they're quarantining the, 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 the towns and shit. And yeah. Shut down businesses. and. I'm just, I've been paranoid ever since I played The Last of Us. That's just me. <laughs> okay. Because, I, I, because they got a whole theory about how The Last of Us, like, the video game The Last of Us. Uh, apparently, like the whole thing was, it was a uh, like a fungus that mutated and started attacking humans. And I started researching shit. I'm like, oh, that fungus, that fungus actually really exists. Yeah, and that's what's yeah. I mean, I'd be worried if yeah, like Ebola kind of had me worried. Yeah, because that that that's that's a bad bug, and um, and highly contagious. Well, it's not as contagious as you would think. You got to be around the bodies. You got to be like in direct contact with someone. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but if that mutates, you know, and viruses mutate uh, like all the time and can become like resistant, that's when you got to be worried. And who knows that any of these viruses can do that, but uh, it sounds like it's not yet. So, I mean, I, I it is a thing. I, I uh, I actually got paranoid back in after watching Outbreak, that movie Outbreak. Oh, you and, know that movie is like number one on iTunes right now because of the coronavirus. Okay, yeah, I mean that that was, I saw it in the theater back in the nineties. That kind of freaked me out, and then I read this book called Biohazard, yeah. written by this like Russian scientist. Oh, who, Resident like, Evil is Biohazard in Japan. So yeah, and like this Russian scientist who was like working doing all that illegal bio weapon uh, experiments in Russia mm-hmm. during the Cold War. It was like illegal. Because, you know, germ warfare has been banned by the, you know, the, uh, the, the Geneva Convention banned that shit, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Russia had been, the USSR was, was experimenting on that shit for decades while, you know, under the table. They were, they were it was all classified, you know. They weren't supposed to, um, but they were trying to make, like, plague bombs and smallpox bombs. And the only thing they couldn't do was deliver it. Like, you, they can't. They haven't been able to deliver a germ bomb because the germs die when it goes off. Right. Like the explosion kills it. So that's – but they were doing it. They were trying to. They had like designated islands that they were like testing these germ bombs on and shit. It was scary shit. And now that dude, that same scientist works for America now. And he like – for many years, he was like you know, teaching American scientists about like germ warfare and bio and – bio weapons and shit and how to defend against them and shit and uh yeah that shit's scary and i, I was kind of paranoid oh, about listeners that eli just <laughs> gave you a spoiler alert on how 2020 is gonna end so uh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like yeah so like, long and thanks for all the fish <laughs> yeah i mean who's to say you know all the like the suicide bombings and shit you know who's to say a guy gets a hold of smallpox and just injects himself with it and gets on a plane. Right, because if you outlaw yeah. stuff like that, then only outlaws will do it. Yeah, I mean that and small, yeah, smallpox. Forget about it. You, you know, <laughs> you don't want that out. Yeah. <laughs> you know so, anyway, they have a move over. I think we talked about that because you're scaring the shit out of me now. You brought the whole <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me say you move on to the next part of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, next part of the podcast where we uh, talk about the box office numbers. And hold on, shit. I'm trying to get these numbers up right now. There we go. Ah, found it. Okay, Eli, give it to me. What is the number one movie of the week? Is it still Bad Boys? It is still know. Bad Boys. Still Bad Boys. Yep, still hanging in there. Bad Boys for life. One more week. 
What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, that movie comes out. All right, so we got Bad Boys for Life, number two, 1917, still hanging in there. I saw that. I saw that last night. Okay, so was it as good as everybody making it out to be? It's pretty good. Nice. Okay. Uh, um, it's not my favorite. I mean, it's got that. Yeah, it's got that Oscar feel to it, where it'll, you know, it's winning all the shit. That, that it's got the shit that they it, look. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's a good movie. It's you know, it's a war movie, obviously. Um, and it, there's some really intense scenes. Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, but. It's not my favorite movie of the year, you know. I mean, it has it's been winning all these awards, so. I mean, it's no end game, you know. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no end game. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it was cool. I, I recommend it, you know. So you know, it's a war picture, so it's kind of a bummer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but there's some really intense scenes. You know, it's World War One, so it deals with the trench warfare and shit, which, uh, you know. Which we saw in Wonder Woman. Well, yeah, which saw one. No movie. man's land. Yeah, they no deal with man no man's land. Yeah. But it's all, but it's in one. Of the, it's one. Of, it's all shot like one. It's like one continuous shot through the whole movie. Oh damn! Okay. Yeah, so it's you know it's meant to feel like one long continuous take. Um, so that so that's pretty commendable. You know, the director Sam Mendes, who directed yeah. it. Um, he he did a few James Bond movies. So yeah. yeah um, so you can tell he was totally flexing his skills. His mm-hmm. cinematic skills with this movie, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's it was really well made and and, and really fast paced because, like I said, it is one continuous shot, so it, it's just something constantly going on. And I saw it in IMAX, so it was like, oh, wow. there was another movie like that to try to imitate a one take. Uh, Birdman, Birdman tried to do that. Oh yeah, that was like one take. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't, but they tried to make it seem like it was. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can kind of tell when there's a cut. Because obviously a film camera can only hold like, like twenty minutes of footage or some shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know when okay when they when the camera like zooms in on a rock or something like or that's, something that's the, cut. Yeah. that's the cut. They probably you know yeah then then they then it cut pans up and you're with the actors again and shit like that. So, um, but yeah, I mean it was still good. It's a good flick. I, I you know I, I you know it's a war movie. You know so. It's it's up there with all the great war movies, you know, Private Ryan, Full Metal Jacket, you know, it's good, you know. So, Ooh, I can't wait to see it. No. Yeah. Uh, number three, we have Do Little, still hanging in there, still doing very little. Number three, huh? Yeah, oh. that like that's where it debuted and stayed there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, number four, Gressel and Hansel. No, oh, Gret- that's Gretel that and Hansel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently, people, some people saying that this is wokeness because they flipped it. It's not no longer Hansel and Gretel. But in thinking the original book, it's actually supposed to be Gretel and Hansel. Like Gretel is actually the the protagonist, and Hansel like okay. her sidekick or whatever. But whatever, who cares? Nobody watch the movie, so it doesn't even matter. Uh, number five, the gentleman. Uh, oh, good shit. You, talk, you talked about this. You talked about it last week. That's right. Yeah, I, I did. It's a good movie. Yeah, go check it out. Go check it out. Yeah, number six, Jumanji: The Next Level. Uh, number seven, Star Wars Episode Nine: Rise of Skywalker. We can talk about. This. Let's just, let me see where it's at right now. Yeah, number six. Yeah. Wow. Still at a billion. <laughs> I don't even think it was at the theater out. It's think still my... there. I mean, this is the seventh week it's been out, so yeah. it's about that time for it to leave the theaters now. So. <laughs> uh, number eight, The Turning. I think you told me what this is. I don't know what this is. But, the whole yeah. movie. Okay. Number at nine, Little Women, and number ten, The Rhythm Section. We told me about that also. So yeah, that's the box office. Like I said, that's what happened right now. Next week we'll have uh. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Mansion. Mag- blah, 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 fuck, whatever. The Harley Quinn movie. Yeah, that's coming out next week. Um, actually, so far they say the movie actually been getting pretty good buzz. People actually shocked. They're like, wait, it's actually a good movie. We don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> what well, the what DC? Yeah, <laughs> right. Like what? <laughs> DC is it's a good DC movie. It makes news. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, oh, and Eli, I sent you that thing uh, because they DC Universe sent me an invite to go see the movie early. Yeah, I went. I checked my email. I got one too. Oh, because you're still with DC Universe, right? <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, that's only for DC Universe members. Yeah. So it's very specific. But the thing is, like I said, since I stay in you know bumfuck Mississippi, every place they're sending me to it that has it early is nowhere near me. Yeah, same here. It was across town. Yeah. For me. So it's like. It's cool, but I still can't I can, go. I can I can wait a day. Yeah. 
<laughs> nah, nah, nobody, I'm not worried about anybody spoiling Harley Quinn for me. So. You know, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's that. I don't, I don't need a special cup or whatever they're giving away. <laughs> right. <laughs> Harley Quinn bra, some shit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. But, yeah, okay, so that's it. Now we can, oh, uh, shit. Before we get into the other shit, Eli, can I actually talk about Arrow now? Sure. I know it, it came out last Tuesday or Wednesday, something like that. So, in, in internet years, this is 100, 100 years ago. But mm-hmm. I want to talk about the show because, like I said, this is uh, kind of the show that started off the TV superhero thing, and it's ended. It's done. That's it. Eight seasons. Oh, throughout. so the last episode, it's done now. It's done now. Last episode has came, went, gone, out of here. So oh, shit. they completely wrapped up everything. Uh, pretty interesting, you know, uh, series finale. Uh, it has some flash, like, you know, when the show used first come on, and it had flashback him in the island. Island, but in, yeah. but in this one they had flat like it was it ended but they had flash because he's he's dead now so yeah. for him to be in the show they did flashbacks from him to actually the first season you know and now since he's the specter and he like rebooted the universe like tony stark did what he did like everybody that died in like all throughout the season and shit like that through the series he brought him back through his oh, magic look. specter power like that so his mom came back uh his other dead sister that died in the other show came back Oh, uh, his best friend Tommy came back, you know. So all the people, but oh, he couldn't yeah. bring every, he couldn't bring everybody back because, like his his father, if he brought his father back, then he wouldn't. His sacrifice made him the arrow, so he couldn't be, he couldn't bring his father back. Uh, he also cleaned up all crime in, in Star City, so it's crime free now. You know, uh, his blown up mansion, he brought that back, so he fixed all that shit before he died and he rebooted the universe. He made universe in his image, whatever like that. And they celebrated him, made a statue and shit like that. Pretty cool. Uh, the flashman. That the weird scene, the the bad guy of the villain, Eli. That's why I want to talk about this. Okay, I'm thinking the bad guy's gonna be like Count Vertigo, or you know, you know, one of the Merlins, or you know, Deathstroke, shit like that. No, none of that shit. The bad guy of the show was a a human trafficker and child attempted child murderer named John Byrne. Now they caught me off guard. I'm like, where have I heard John Byrne before? I'm like, oh shit, that John Byrne. And apparently the showrunner of this, of Arrow, does that with every show he ends. He'll have some criminal, outlaw, kill terrorist, rapist named John Byrne. I'm like, oh, really? Do you not like John Byrne? I don't know. Now, for those who don't know, like I said, the inside baseball, for the listeners who don't know, John Byrne is actually like a, a well-famous comic book legend that writes, draws, damn near everybody. Fantastic Four, Superman, X-Men, whatever the fuck. Not really Arrow, though. You can't really find any Arrow shit he's done, which is even make it more weird. Like, mm-hmm. is it a shout out or does he really not like John Byrne? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's some shit we don't know. So when Arrow's at the end about, you know, like the whole time he, he's saying like, John Byrne, this human piece of shit. When I find him, put an arrow through his eye. Like, don't kill John Byrne. He didn't, he didn't deserve this. Yes, he does. <laughs> you know, the end. John Byrne, you have failed this city. You know, but he doesn't kill him. Cause, but apparently, I think in the first episode, he did kill him. Since he rebooted the universe, John Byrne lived or whatever. So, I don't know. I'll go back and watch that. But the reason I brought that up, because remember how you talked about 1917 had that one take that looked awesome shit like that? It made me realize, when they showed the first season action scenes, it made me realize, like, whoa. The action scenes on that on the first season were way better than what they are now, Eli. Yeah, that's what it's, hooked me. It's, it's night and day. The fight like, scenes like, were good. Like back season then. eight and season seven, you're like, it's like, okay, just go. they just feel like they're dancing, you know, Zumba, like dancing J Lo and shit like that. That first one, that shit was able to show the shit. Like one of the scene they the scene they showed, it it like it emulated a one take action scene. Like Arrow went in, kicking ass, shooting people, stabbing them body flipping, you know, breaking bones and shit like that, but it all like it was one take. I'm like, whoa, they were doing that shit back then? And like, you made me think, oh, that's what hooked us to the show. Yeah. Like, was it, what's her face? Um, uh, Lexi, uh, Lexi Alexander, is that her name? The, uh, the She directed Punisher. She oh, yeah. The Punisher Wait, did, War she, Zone. Did, did she do one of those shows? She, she was directing those episodes, those old episodes. Oh. So you can totally tell. Like the influence, if you watch Punisher Warzone mm-hmm. and that first season of Arrow, you can see like the parent, like they look almost the same. Yeah, you know, and, and she was thing, directing like those if, fight scenes too. Yeah, like if you watch that fight scene, I'm like this fight scene looks better than anything I've seen like the last three, four seasons of this show. If they'd have kept that shit going, the show might have not ended. You know, yeah. 
because she's like a, she's like a, she used to be a stunt woman and like a like a, a kickboxing champion. Yeah. So she knows like the court the choreography was like yeah those fight scenes were good. You know, I'm like before this, Daredevil. This was even before, before Daredevil. Before Daredevil, like like yeah. like if you like honestly, I would put that shit comparable to Daredevil. Yeah. Like with this, because at, at first I like it sounds weird now in 2020, but when Arrow first came on, no, that shit was that shit was some epic ass fight scenes on there. Like shit they were doing, yeah. like you know you wouldn't imagine seeing shit like this on TV. No. But I guess they apparently started cutting the budget on the show like that and started looking cheaper and they cut budgets on the stunt teams and all sorts like that. But yeah. That was pretty cool. Oh, uh, they, they they actually had the funeral scene in there where everybody showed up, like all the people that were dead came back. Like everybody that's ever been on Arrow that was a major character came back. You know, uh, was at the end. Even Barry was on there. You know, the Flash he showed up at the end. He like yeah. And Kara Supergirl showed up also. You know, she's not cool with them, but since they rebooted the universe, made it seem like everybody already knew her and she's just cool with them. So whatever. Well, aren't they? Didn't he like make all the combine all the universes or combine all the Earths or some shit? Well, all the CW Earths. There's still yeah. other Earths out there, but like the CW Earths. So yeah, so Supergirl Earth, Black Lightning's Earth, uh, all the all those are one Earth, and basically they all have history. Like they've all been just hanging out and just teaming up and stuff like that. Like everybody just know each other. Mm-hmm. So he's Rick kind of also like that. So yeah, Kara shows up and everybody's like, "Hey, glad you're here." Even though technically they've never met her before. If you go, but like I said, it's a new universe, so the rules are thrown out. Uh, and then <laughs> the stinger at the very end of the show. And this is why I want to talk about this, because John Diggle, who everybody already suspected, uh, right before he said he's about to pack up and move his family away because there's no reason to stay in Star City because Ollie's gone, no more crime here, it's kind of pointless to be here. So when he packs up and gets ready to move, uh, a spaceship crashes right in front of his front yard, and he goes down, pick it up, and then he picks up the thing, opened up, and it's this green light shining in his face. Show ends. Boom. That's it. So... Uh, so they don't really show him. So become... he didn't get a he didn't get a ring or nothing. No, he just opened up this this uh this thing, and it just shines a green light in his face. So they don't show you what it is, but yeah, it's a green lantern. It's a green lantern ring. We know what it is because, like I said, they've already been hinting at this shit a while ago. His stepfather on last season turns out his name was Stewart, and he I was said, about to say. Is it going to turn out like he was adopted or something and his real name's Stuart? Well, that's the thing. His stepfather on, on last season came on the show, and he, and he was a military general also. His name was Stuart. And he said the reason okay. th- he doesn't call himself Stuart because, like, they don't they don't like each other. But at the end of the show, they made up. So okay. and we don't know. It's a new universe. Maybe he changed. Maybe he's going to go by John Stewart now. You know? And on top of that, uh, and like not this crossover, but the last crossover, the Elseworlds crossover, like what nineties Flash showed up. He recognized Diggle. He looked at Diggle. And he said, "John, I'm glad you're here." He like, you know me? Yeah. Where's your ring? Like, what are you talking about? Like, oh, this is a different universe. So obviously, in the universe that he's in, John Diggle's already a Green Lantern. So a little nod oh. there. So, like I said, basically he said he's moving to Metropolis, and they got a Superman show coming next fall. He may pop up there as a Green Lantern. So is the Superman going to be that one dude? It's still going to be him. Everybody hates him, but it's him. <laughs> really? Yeah. Everybody. So it's going to be him. Name show. Name the show is going to be Superman and Lois. At the end of the crisis, uh, it turns out that not only has one son, he has two sons. So we'll see how it goes from there. So Arrow's done. Legends of Tomorrow has taken his spot. Legends of Tomorrow has already been renewed for another season. How how that happened? Who knows? Uh, and yeah, Superman is coming next year well no this year just in the fall so into the arrow arrow started the universe first one to go out um yeah i could talk more about arrow but i'm not going to because <laughs> i know nobody gives a shit so no reason to keep talking about that can we talk about some shit people do care about now disney plus sure okay pretty much not to talk about it. it's one of the super bowl spots that came in it was like 30 second trailer uh it showed three uh three shows it showed falcon winter soldiers it showed uh, WandaVision, and it showed Loki. Uh, is Loki coming out this year? I don't know. I don't know, because I thought Loki was coming out this year, but they showed it something like weird, because uh, Falcon Winter Soldier had been moved up. Uh, WandaVision, I thought, wasn't coming out till next year, but they moved that up to come out this year. Maybe they moved Loki up also. Maybe they realized, hey, we gotta get some subscribers on this shit, you know, because I canceled my subscription. I, I'm like, <laughs> once Mandalorian was done, I'm like, no reason me to stay here, around here. I've seen every episode of DuckTales and Darkwing Duck. I don't need to watch them again. I'm fine. So until you give me some other shit brand new that I've never seen before, there's no reason for you to keep paying you money. You know. So, yeah. So, apparently those shows can come back. 
Um, Falcon, they showed Falcon throwing the shield. Looked like he had a good arm, Eli. I don't know. <laughs> People were worried about how he's going to be shield. He, like he's throwing it just fine. Uh, like he was fighting some parents. Oh, really? I, th- I, I thought so. Was... Really? <laughs> I thought so, yeah. <laughs> you just think he was going to throw like... <laughs> <laughs> Those are people thinking like, how's he gonna throw the shield? Like he just throws it, you know. <laughs> I thought he had an arm on him, you know. He had a super soldier <laughs> arm, but he had a good arm to throw it. I mean, he better not. I could throw it. <laughs> oh. uh, so they showed uh, one division. Like I said, one division is my favorite. That MC. look. Th- those clips look really cool. I, I like, kept. I'm, yeah. I'm psyched for that show. I'm just like, saying, that's, Eli, that's, I've been telling people for the longest, that is the most hyped project, period, that MCU is putting out that I'm interested in. That is the most hyped yeah. project out of any of them. It's exactly what I thought it was going to be, like some kind of sitcom, weird, and you see like flashbacks of like, look like they were like imitating Brady Bunch and, and the yeah. Dick Van Dyke show and Roseanne. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I love Lucy. and yeah, I love like Lucy, sitcom, yeah. Like, yeah, some sort of weird sit, uh, simulation or whatever. Yeah. Just the imagery, like, okay, that looks cool. And what we know about Vision, and and yeah. if, if they if they're gonna do that Tom King run, you know, which they, they have to. That, I mean, they, I mean, it's not gonna be that, the whole thing, but yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be in, in that the, fucking feel. Then yeah, yeah, that that could be good. So yeah. oh, and because I don't give two shits about Loki, I don't even care about the Falcon. Like, Winter why Soldier is he? Stuff. Yeah, why is Loki even back? That's what it's yeah, Tom Wilson. He he's he's a name. Why not? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, the Falcon show could be interesting, depending on how they do. It, if they take it to the level where it's supposed to be, but they won't, because it's Disney. Yeah, just, it'd be like I mean, I just don't know. I mean, I mean, it looks cool. It looks like they're spending money. You know, yeah. it looks like it's got all that Disney money, and they're they're you know, but like, like what's it gonna be? You know, I mean, I, I already see a bunch of fighting on. Like like I said, I I watched how many seasons of Arrow. Of, right. of just a bunch of cheap fighting scenes, right? You know? <laughs> Same thing with Daredevil and and all, all those Netflix shows. You know, it's just a bunch of hand to hand combat. Like these two guys don't really have superpowers, really. You know, yeah. <laughs> so it's just gonna be a bunch of bunch of fighting, bunch of hand to hand combat. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't really care about that. And then Loki, I mean, unless we see like. Silver Surfer, if he interacts with the Guardians or, or something, you know, which I don't we know really, they're not. Yeah, like I don't really give a shit. Like, I don't, <laughs> like, I don't care. If Thor's not going to be in it, then why should I care? You know exactly. I mean? So it's going to be just Loki just jumping from universe to universe, just doing Loki shit. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Um, yeah. But like I said, when one division comes back, that's what. No, nah, I, I get it for Falcon's humor. So only thing is, Falcon will show that I can tell you right now everything's going to happen in the plot. And that's why I feel bad about it because i already know what's going to happen because disney if nothing else is predictable so yeah yeah that's them uh let's go to something even more wackier than the mcu the fast and furious trailer <laughs> yeah eli i don't give a fuck what anybody says i love this franchise i love the death it's my second favorite franchise right now after the mcu it just gets crazier that's and all wilder I was doing it. It's ripping off the mc <laughs> that's all they, they've been doing that people are just now catching on They've been doing this for the last three movies. You know, they've already, they basically are the Avengers with cars. Yeah. You know, Kurt Russell is the, uh, the Nick Fury of the team. I need special ops to save the world from nuclear weapons and warlord and terrorists. And it's going to be you guys because you can drive cars. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Charlize Theron is basically like the Lex Luthor of the universe. Like, she controls, she's been controlling that whole life, like the whole franchise and shit, and she's just been revealed. Uh, Vin Diesel. This movie is ripping off every other Marvel plotline now. He has an evil brother, really, another one. <laughs> so Loki. I mean, Thor's did it. Black Panther's done it. Uh, what's another? It's another one who did it too. Hell, you can say Captain America did it with Venom Soldier. Basically, like they're like brothers anyway. Yeah. You no. Know, oh, uh, Wonder Woman. Her evil brother. So. So yeah, this is the same plot line. Where he's came from, we have no idea. This movie, this franchise is 20 years old, and they never even mention that Dom has a brother. Even though we see his sister lives with him, we went to Cuba, met his cousins, we met all his family, never mentioned a brother. Even though all he keeps talking about is family, 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 family. Now this dude pops up out of nowhere. 
I thought, what's his face? The dead guy was his brother. Too. Everybody's his brother. Yeah. <laughs> now let's talk about that guy. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. Now the big sport, and this trailer was four minutes long. It's like three and a half minutes long, some shit like that. So this wasn't even a trailer. They gave you the movie. We know everything that's going to happen in this movie. They even gave you the spoiler thing, which they shouldn't have done. Han is back in these movies. How the fuck is Han back in these movies? Everybody else is happy about it, but I'm like, wait, what? Now, Eli, Han died. And I don't mean died. I mean died, died. Like, he died. Okay, the, the timeline of this movie is he, weird. He, he, got, he got blown up in the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> My... <laughs> Some would say the dark side has unnatural <laughs> capabilities. I'd say he should be a robot or a clone. Like or, clone, or they have the Lazarus pit. Or some <laughs> <laughs> Or Thanos snapped him back. You're right. <laughs> like damn, that shit was strong. Arrow brought him back as a Spectre, you know. There, Star Starly Seraph or what's her Charlie Saren has has the has the infinity gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a glove and shit. Oh, like That's this, what they got to steal. <laughs> this is how insane this shit is. Okay, he got blown up in a car by Jason Statham. Uh, Vin Diesel flew to Japan to get his body, to bring it back to L.A. so they can have a funeral to bury him. That's the Tokyo Drift one, right? Yes, I think I see that guy. One. Was Sonny Chiba in that one? Probably. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, because the timeline of these movies so weird. So yes, it's Tokyo weird because I, I don't care about these movies, but I always end up seeing them. Oh, but there's a like, lore to them now. That's, that's I, like I mythology. I, I I have seen almost. I haven't seen. I don't think the last one. Well, the last see, one I saw was the, the one with Ronda Rousey. Well, yeah. so you haven't seen what Ronda Rousey was like six. There's like two okay. more after that. I think yeah, I haven't seen. Yeah, I think that was the last one I saw. No, 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 no. Ronda Rousey was seven. Gina Carraro. Toronto was six. That's right. Yeah, I seen that one too. Okay. Um, so yeah, eight. You gotta watch eight because that's like. <laughs> do you have to watch? It? Actually, you really don't have to watch it. Because <laughs> it really does nothing for the franchise. But yeah. Now, yeah. are they still furious? Because I just see fast. In this... <laughs> well, you know that's the thing. They're superheroes now. They're not furious no more. <laughs> they're, they're furious, but because they're furious because when they get in these cars, they're superheroes now. Like for the end of the movie, like they're chasing Dom's evil John Cena brother, and he flies away in a car with a magnetic bat plane or some shit like that. So, so it's like mask, <laughs> basically. <laughs> but he chases after him by Tarzan I saw that swinging. Where he swings the car <laughs> from a vine from one <laughs> island to another. Now. I didn't know a vine was strong enough to swing a car. I thought a vine would snap when it tries to swing a car. It's like, what was that movie with the transporter? Remember yeah. where he, he like flipped the car? Like he, <laughs> he like jumped the car and he flipped it around and then like hit the ceiling or something and made hit. I forget. It was I, think, so, no, I think it was James Bond. No, that was. I and remember that's it was the weird shit. These cars do weirder <laughs> shit than James Bond movies do. <laughs> yeah. Like what the fuck? They, like they just don't even care anymore. Eli, they don't I'm, care. John Cena catches a car in this movie, and in his trailer. Like they, they throw dead. a car at him, he catches it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. they don't give. I a just fuck remember anymore. hearing he goes, "When you're not fast enough," and then I thought he was gonna say, "Or furious enough." <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> you know what? They, I think they have dropped the furious like a long time ago. Yeah, you know? they're not furious no more. That, that was like the hook for me. Maybe yeah, that's okay. why I've. <laughs> when you got superpowers, what you furious about? <laughs> you can use your car to swing from island to island. Well, who's furious? Yeah, they're robots now. Right, they, robots they, are a thing. Because Idris Elba was a cyborg Idris in the last Elba movie. Was a robot in, the right. last, in that movie. <laughs> so now they all bets are off at this point. You know, yeah. just bring Transformers. Just that's have the, the car start step. transforming. They might as well. The car will transform. Like that's that, that's how this movie is gonna end. He's gonna be in his Dodge Charger right before he dies. The Dodge Charger transforms and blocks whatever you know. Wouldn't that be dope? That would be dope if like Han shows up and then his car turns into like some Gundam mech. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only step they have left. It's just it turns out he was an alien the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cause you know what? They're not even gonna explain it. They're not gonna explain it. He just just come back. <laughs> Like, what the fuck, man? These movies, they don't care anymore. Can we move on past that? Sure. 
Okay, so now moving past that, we're gonna talk about the uh, video game section, and pretty much the only thing that happened that I, that's notable is the Nintendo Switch has is the number three selling a Nintendo console of all time. So it's outsold the Wii, it's outsold the GameCube, all the bullshit. Like the only thing it had, and uh, it's outsold. I think the Super Nintendo also. Oh, but I think the only thing it hasn't outsold is the Nintendo, and I think the original Wii. But everything else is outsold. So. Uh, like I said, the Switch is gangbusters, and it's like one of the few consoles they sell. They sell it and make money off of it. Like everybody else sells it for a loss, but they just keep cranking these things out. Eli played it. That shit's fun. Now you know, I played with my nephew. We get on Smash Brothers. I'm like, okay, I see why this shit is selling like it is. You know. So, uh, let me say we move on to the next part of the podcast. Sure. And now this is Don't your baby right here, Eli, because I didn't do much. <laughs> But we're going to talk about the comic books because it's comic book bullies and we're going to just dive into it. We can talk about all these books that just came out this week. And I guess I'm going to go first. Sure. Okay, we're going to start off with the X Minute. X Minutes. And we're going to start off with X Men number five. And this was a, this is a weird book because it just like it just jumped in and like I had to make sure I didn't miss any books coming into it. But it's like went from one book to another and just jumped into it. So this book, they're fighting these old enemies they fought before called the Children of the Vault. Never heard of them before. There's some things from the 2000s when nobody was reading X Men, but they were a thing now. And the book starts off with uh, one of the children the vault got loose named Serena or Sierra or some shit like that. Uh, she's being chased down by Wolverine. Wolverine trying to catch her, but she keeps like hypnotizing like regular dudes and like running them at Wolverine just, kind of, just to slow him down. I mean, they don't stop him, but they just slow him down. He just minor inconvenience, but it's enough for her to get back into the vault. You know, and this vault is like this extra city. Where basically just any random person, like regular people, can get in there, and it mutates mutates them into like mimicking mutant superpowers. So it's like a way for regular people to get superpowers. And Professor X is like, we got to stop this thing because if the humans find out how to use this thing, it's gonna make us obsolete. It's basically like their version of Mega Sentinel. We gotta, gotta stop this thing. So, but they're like, how do we get in it? We can't get into the vault. So he gets three mutants. He gets Darwin. He gets uh, another mutant called Sync. And the reason he gets Sync because Sync can mim- mimic other mutants' powers. So he like if he can mutant Darwin power, he's got a better chance to get in there. Oh, and X-23. And X-23 is like, I'm not X-23. I'm Wolverine. And Wolverine's in the background like, that's my girl right there. <laughs> that's Wolverine. And like, okay. He, he like, he back there like a proud girl dad, you know. So basically he's like, okay, you're going to go into this vault. We're going to find a way to sneak you in there. You get in there. You got to find exactly what's going on in this vault. And you got to collect the information. And you got to come back to us. And they're like, okay, easy enough. But here's the catch. Once you get in the vault, we can't get you out. What do you mean you can't get you out? Yeah, we can't get you out until the vault actually opens up. Well, how long that might take? Oh, uh, maybe a thousand or so years. Like, wait, what? Yeah, you can be stuck in there for like a thousand years. But since y'all are mortal, it doesn't matter. Like, wait, what? Because, you know, they have this thing where if they get the information out, they can tell it to Moria, and Moria would tell them, and they evolve, and blah, 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 shit like that, you know. So basically that's what happens. The X-Men sneak them in. They go in there. When it goes in there, the city like activates its defense forces, and they're like, "Oh shit!" And then we don't know what happened to them. And three months later, you know, Cyclops is walking around, just like Professor. How long do you think they might be in there? And Professor's like, "Oh, I know exactly how long they're gonna be in there. Uh, five hundred twenty-seven days and some odd seconds or so." Like, "Oh shit!" Cyclops like, "What have I done?" And the book ends. So yeah. Oh, and also they can't be revived either. Okay. Oh, that's a book. Oh, I just feel like it's just weird. Didn't no setup anything like that. These feels like they're one shot stories. This is X Men. This is X Men. Yeah, X Men Five, like the main book, X Men. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it, every book, every one of these books so far feel like one shots, but it feels like other shit has been going on that I feel like I've been missing. But it's cool overall. Three out of five. I don't know if I'm missing anything because it's just weird that they sent X X twenty three, you know, five hundred years to the future, but she's hanging out in Fallen Angels right now. So I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. I'll, I'll let you go. All right. Well, I'm just going to start out with my favorite book of the week here, and that's Conan the Barbarian, number 12. Let's do it. So this is the epic conclusion to Jason Aaron's Conan arc. Oh, he's done? Yeah. Um, he's done on this one. I, I think he's doing King Conan later on uh, this year, but, but the regular Conan the Barbarian book is I think Jim Zub is taking it over. I think that's who it is. Okay. I like Zub. Um, I like Zub. Yeah. So he'll be doing this, but uh, but Aaron will be doing King Conan, 
which I think comes out either later this year or next year or something. But um, no, this this basically wraps up that that um, story arc about the the blood Raziel or whatever the blood god and the kids of the blood witch who were who were basically trying to kill Conan. And the last issue, they killed Conan. They finally sacrificed him, killed him. He was dead. He went to Valhalla. He went and met Krom oh, and shit. battled Krom. And Krom basically says, all right, you asshole, you know, I'm going to put you back to life and you're, no, you're not going to die as a warrior like all the cool Sumerians do. You're going to die as a decrepit old man and I'm going to laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Fuck you, Conan. You're coming back to life. So this, this, it picks up right there. Conan's back to life. Oh, uh, damn. I'm thinking Conan, we find him with death of Conan. No, he, he comes back to life. He's got like the fucking dagger stuck in his chest. <laughs> and he rips him out. The kids, those, those witch twins, they turn into monsters and shit. So Conan just rips out the fucking daggers out of his chest and start cutting them up and shit. Of course, these kids, they're monsters. They're, they're demons. They're not dying. He's hacking them up and they're not dying. He like cuts one of their heads off. He's like, damn you, Conan. He's like, sister, throw my head at Conan and I'll kill him with my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> it's like um it's just a crazy like battle finale. Um there's in the beginning there's like a, a flashback scene of the little kids when they were younger and Conan actually saved their life when they were little. Like they were about to get like killed by some like bandits and Conan shows up and like kills the bandits and saves the kids. And like yeah, you kids shouldn't be running around here. There's a bunch of it's a rough this is a rough village, man. You know, a lot of pirates in this ta- in this in this town. You know, it's not a place for children. And then they're like, oh, well, well, our mother, our mother was murdered. So we're kind of just moving around. And he's just like, yeah, mothers get murdered. Such is life. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, we hope, we hope you, uh, as I hope you get justice, you find the scoundrel that, that murdered your mother and gave him, you know, and, 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 and you guys get justice. And of course, Conan was the one that killed their mom. So it's funny. (laughs) So that was like a flashback. So here, you know, then we go back to the the battle that Raziel, that blood god, comes out of this pit. And he it's just a big, you know, Conan, you know, undead Conan just fighting this giant monster. And then a bunch of his kingdom shows up. Conan's son shows up with his kingdom, a bunch of warriors from his kingdom. And they start fighting. They start fighting this monster and they eventually, you know, push the push the monster back into the pit and then and, and then they they take off and uh you know and he's just it, it just ends with conan talking to his son you know giving him advice about you know you know how his he he can't rest as a king and he must he, he still got adventuring to do and all that shit and all that and um and that's basically how it ends um like i said it was a lot of fun it's just action-packed Conan being Conan coming back to life and kicking ass and chopping shit up. And um, I do admit that this arc kind of meandered, like as a whole, you know, the arc, the 12 issues kind of meandered a bit because it wasn't all about this Raziel blood God thing. And we just got to see glimpses of the life and times of Conan throughout this, these 12 issues. So not every issue was like, uh, like involved in the, with the blood god. Mm-hmm. Um, some of these issues were just, you know, unrelated, felt like unrelated one shots. And that could, you know, as a whole kind of, you know, when you, when you look back at the story, at the arc as a whole, it kind of like, yeah, it meandered a bit, but um, I still felt like the overall spirit of this 12 issue run, it's Conan. It's just Conan doing Conan shit. Um, I thought Jason Aaron did it real, you know, you can totally tell he was having fun. You know, the art was cool. It was bloody. So yeah, this is a five out of five for me. I, I, I read this book first and I was like, everything else was downhill pretty much. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A lot of damn books so, came out. So yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, next book I'm going to do is X-Force number six. Okay. Um, uh, like I said, it was a pretty exciting book. Actually, this has been my favorite X book out of all the X books that have been going on so far. And basically how the book starts off is that uh, it begins with the X-Men fighting in this, you know, South American city called 
in what country called Terra Verde. And they go back to see exactly how it started, the whole thing. So Professor X is trying to sign this treaty with the El Presidente of Terra Verde, whose name is Manuel Cocom, or whatever his name is. Uh, right before they get ready to sign the treaty, uh, they get under fire from a terrorist attack. Uh, a terrorist attack basically these plant monsters just pop out of nowhere and they start attacking them. Uh, Black Tom is with Professor X. He was like, what happened last time isn't it going to happen again. So I'm going to make sure I protect Professor X. Uh, he was able to, uh, you know, push back the plant monsters, but they kidnapped El Presidente Tay's son. But even though Professor X was fine, he didn't get attacked. Uh, El Presidente got a few scratches on him, but for the most part, he lived. You know, and Beast is like, hold up, something ain't right about this whole thing. Okay, so the terrorists came in. They actually captured Cocom, but let Cocom live. Didn't kill Professor X, and all he did is take his son. Something right here. So Beast went down there to El Presidente's mansion himself. Snuck in there, beat the shit out of all the secret servants on the way in there. Talked to El Presidente, like, okay, what the fuck's going on here? He's like, I can't tell you, because if I tell you, they said they'll kill my son. I'm like, okay, well, you ain't got to tell me anything. Jean, Jean Gray flies out of, into the window, puts her hand on his head, and she knows every fucking thing that happens. Basically, what happened is, is that, uh, Terra Verde used to be, well, they're still like the fourth poorest country in South America. But they had this medicine that they were going to end up selling, that they were developing, and it was going to help them, you know, stabilize the economy. But when Krakoa came up with their specialized mutant medicine that they sold to the world, it basically made, you know, Terra Verde's medicine useless. So it means their country is going to fall further, further into despair. But what they did with the medicine that instead of just not only can it has properties of healing people, it can turn people into plant monsters, which that's what they're doing right now. So basically, like these, they're insurgents that are attacking, you know, El Presidente. And Beast, Beast basically sends the uh, the X Force in. He's like, I want you to go in there. I want you to get back to the President's son. And I want you to make sure that nobody knows you were there. And you know what I mean by that. Like, Wolverine's like, oh yeah, I know. They go in there chop people up don't give a fuck but they run to these plant monsters plant monsters can't be killed that easily they're chopping them up they just keep coming back just keep coming back just keep coming back and beast is just like gene take them out because i know you can do it be like but i thought we had a rule they're like they're plant monsters they're not human do it so she does her phoenix thing they blow up they don't come back and then gene's like beast fuck you <laughs> you know why she flies away so they find el presidente's son uh being protected by the plant monsters and when they get ready to rescue him he turns to a plant monster himself. He was like, oh, no, I staged the whole thing myself. We're like, oh, okay. So they they still rest, they still still get him anyway. They take him back to Krakoa. Beast interrogates him, finds all information about what's going on. That's when he realized that, they, that the El Presidente's son set the whole thing up so the El Presidente wouldn't sign the peace treaty with Krakoa. So basically they can go to war because basically he was trying to start his own 9-11 or Pearl Harbor or some shit like that. That's what he was trying to do. So Beast won't, tries to make sure that he remembers any of this shit, turns his mind into a vegetable, sends him back to uh, the El Presidente so he can't remember any of this shit. And Beast's like, I did what I had to do. That's what the X-Force is, the weird deniable ops. So nobody can, plausible deniability. That way, Professor X don't know what's going on. El Presidente doesn't know what's going on. Everybody's safe. But El Presidente's son turns into some like kind of liquid goo and becomes like a, a thing. The book ends. So he's going to be a problem that they have to face later on, but we'll see how it goes. Overall, fun book. It uh, basically, you know, it iterates why X-Force exists because they're deniable ops. You know, they're not supposed to, you know, they're undercover. Beast basically says that if I got to, I'll do whatever I do to protect a core. If I got to make a backdoor deal, if I got to do bribes, if I got to assassinate somebody, blow up a lab, take down a helicopter, whatever got to be done, I'm the one that's going to do it. And the X-Force is basically my, you know, my team I use to, to orchestrate the whole thing. He basically, hey, he's a, a conductor and they're his, his symphony, you know, of death. So overall, yeah, book four to five, still the strongest S book in my opinion. So, yeah. Okay. Um, what should I do next? Uh, oh, Immortal Hulk, number, number 30? Is that what it is? They're getting up there. Yeah, number 30? Um, so yeah, this was another fun book. Um, this was all action, basically. Uh, the Minotaur, who's running um, the what's it called? Roxxon. Yeah, they unleashed these kaiju monsters on a city, 
and uh, the Hulk, all the Hulks, you know, are fighting them. Um, Rick Jones, he's basically like Neo. <laughs> he's not even a monster. It's just him. Just he's like in human form, but he's floating kind of like Magneto. The fuck? You know? Okay. And he's got all like he's just like throwing gamma energy and shit. Like he's like, uh, yeah, like Magneto throwing gamma energy. He is like ill as hell. Um, so basically, that's all it is: is them fighting these giant kaiju beasts that were unleashed. This whole monster attack was orchestrated by Roxxon because they're trying to frame the Hulk. You know. Um, and of course, uh, the Hulk uh, kills one of the the monsters, but um, when it dies, it, he rips it apart. But inside the monster, this kaiju piece, are a bunch of like parasite crab things that start crawling all over the city and start attacking everybody. And of course, you know, the media is watching. It's on like news. There's like news cameras on scene, and they're like, "Oh my God, look what the what the Hulk just did! He unleashed all these monsters." So that's what, you know, and the Minotaur is like, excellent. This is my plan. They want to blame it all on the Hulk. So, and now, now release them, you know, because they orchestrated this whole deal. Now let's show these people that we're the saviors. And they have their own monster. What's that guy's name again? The first hairy uh, Hulk guy? Uh, Zinmu? Yeah, that guy. I might have fucked it up, but yeah. He shows up. They're like, unleash, unleash plan or uh, unleash him now. So... Obviously, that white, uh, hairy beast, who was the first Hulk, like you said, yeah, he shows up at the end, and that's Roxxon's monster that Ooh. they're okay. See, so like now, now you now you selling me. Now you selling me. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. This was again four out of five. Fun book. It was just all just action. Hulk, all the Hulk, the whole Hulk squad. You know, Brett Banner, Hulk, Rick Jones. Magneto, Neo, uh, even what's her face? Betsy, Betsy Ross as the harpy, you know, they're all getting down mm. fighting these beasts and shit. And, um, yeah, so this was cool. This can, this book continues to be dope. So cool. Okay. Uh, next book I'm going to do is Thor two. Right. Uh, Donny Cates y'all <laughs> comic cast <laughs> don't right. do it anymore. Cause they, now they hate Donny Cates in 2020. I guess. Yeah, they do. They don't yeah, okay. like it no you die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so this book, it starts off interesting. Okay, so we see, like I said, the Black Winter is this thing that destroys universe. Matter of fact, it destroyed our universe or the universe that Galactus remembers. And this one it sees destroying another universe. And we see some heroes in this universe trying to save them from being destroyed. And apparently it's the Justice League. Like they just say, you see a sun god. A bat god, a green god, you know, so she's like, okay, y'all need to be subtle about this. And then right before the Black Winter destroys everything, you see the hand of destiny. The hand of destiny that was supposed to be in crisis that wasn't in crisis. Like the hand you see when you crisis, whatever. And then they say, and they will fall to their stone face, uh, Omega, who is the the dark of the blah, blah, blah. I'm like, are y'all trying to say dark side? Oh, whatever. Okay. So. Basically, uh, this universe is destroyed by the Black Winter. It's some makeshift Justice League-esque type universe is gone. Cut to where we're going now. Last issue, Dark uh, Galactus has to eat five planets in order to get his power back. And the first planet to go to is Clips. And Thor goes there, but then he tells Galactus, I say the name. You know, reason because he goes there and he finds there's people still on the planet. He's like, I'm, I'm going to let you eat, you know, uninhabited planets. But if people are on the planet Galactus, I'm not gonna let you eat them. And Galactus, you know, slaps Thor to the bottom of the uh on onto the planet, surface of the planet. He like, uh, you're not gonna tell me what to do. I'm hungry. I wanna eat right now. And Thor's like, No, you're gonna listen to me just because you think you gave me this power, you don't know nothing about the power I have. So he throws his hammer and blows off two of Galactus' fingers. So now Galactus can only do like the the hang ten sign now with his fingers. Uh, the hammer comes back and kneecaps Galactus. <laughs> so he falls down to the... the better. Keep in mind, Galactus' arm is still missing from the last time he got fought to whatever. And Thor's like, okay, now you bow to me, Galactus. You're my hero, you know. And then he calls for Sif. Sif is now controlling the Rainbow Bridge because uh, Heimdall, Heimdall has died during the... Uh, they crossover, whatever. Realms of the Earth or Realms of Realms. 
flies all the people from Clips to uh, Asgard. He like, Galactus, you're not going to eat this planet until I can make sure that I can save the crops and the way of life that two people have. Then I'm going to let you eat the planet. That way I can bring them back and have the planet again. He like, like, nah, I changed my mind. And he just started eating the planet right now, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then he eats it so much that the planet just blows up. He And Thor is just like, Galactus, what the hell did you do? I told the people that I was going to save their planet. You just blew it up. Now, now they have nowhere to go. They're like, well, that's not my problem. That's your problem. Matter of fact, you're beginning with my problem. And so Galactus is like fully charged and fully healed now. His arm is back. He can. He got all five digits back. His kneecap is cool. And he's like, okay, Thor, I'm, I'm tired of your ass. You about to go. Before he can blast him, he gets shot at. And he don't know who's who shooting at him. He turns around, and it's Beta Ray Bill and Scuttlebutt. Uh, Scuttlebutt is the name of his ship that he flies with. So, And Thor is like, Bill, what you doing here? He's like, oh, uh, I just saw both of you blow up a planet. So I'm going to have a conversation with Galactus. And Bill looks at Thor. He's like, brother, uh, I'm hoping you stay out of it. But if you get in my way, you're going to be more of my problems too. And the book ends. And then I think the next book shows Thor fight Beta Ray Bill. So, yeah. Oh, uh, pretty cool book. Action, 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 action. Uh, Thor vs. Galactus. Who doesn't like that shit? Overall, popcorn fun. Nothing real meaty to it. Like, you know, his Silver Surfer where he was all philosophical and metaphorical and shit. This is just action, action, action. But I give it a 4 to 5. It's cool. So, so yeah. So, I've heard them, like, what they're saying on Comic Cast is... Like Thor's cosmic Thor now? Yeah, he's uh yeah, uh he's Galactus Hero now. But like, yeah, but I'm like, wasn't Thor kinda always cosmic? Like he wasn't he was, from space? But now he has the power <laughs> cosmic in him, so he's even more cosmic than what he is. Okay. Now. Yeah. Because I thought ain't he from space? He is, but he's <laughs> even spacier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, let's see what else. Uh, I read a bunch of crap. Um I guess well, that's do... always fun. Yeah, I mean, it was a yeah. I bought a, it was a. I spent a lot of money and a lot of and a lot of it was just like kind of meh. I guess I'll do Star Wars number two. Go for it. Uh, yeah, Star Wars number two. Now, I, I the only reason why I picked this up because I, I I thought the last issue was kind of eh, it was all right. You know, they were kind of going over familiar territory. You know, they really didn't even go pat like they like it was still like. The last issue wasn't even after the end of Empire Strikes Back. You right, know what like, I mean? like right before the end. Yeah, like, like in that middle part where you blinked and you didn't pay attention. You know. Yeah, like it was just right after the, the like he got Luke got his hand chopped off and he found out about Vader being his dad. Mm-hmm. Um, so this one we get to after Empire Strikes Back, um, we get to see Lando. Lando is the standout character in this issue. We I get didn't to see really him like do... Lando's character in the first book. I thought they kind of made him like whiny and bitchy. Yeah, well, cowardly. they make up for this. I mean, Leia, she doesn't trust him because, you know, what he did. So there's that dynamic there. Um, but, you know, so Lando goes off to try and help them. And Lando and Chewie, they go to Tatooine. Um, they, like, wheel and deal with the weak way uh, pirates. Um, and then he meets mm-hmm. Jabba and all this shit. And... Um, so there's that going on. Then meanwhile, we got Leia and the, the rebel fleet. They're trying to like contact the rest of the, the rebel alliance because they're, you know, they're kind of in shambles after, I mean, it's em- after empire strikes back. So they mm-hmm. got to regroup. They're having trouble communicating to everybody. Um, I think we meet Poe Dameron's parents or somebody. Well, they in the last somebody, book, so, yeah. yeah. Somebody Dam- Dameron. So I, mm-hmm. I recognize that name, but um, Luke, he's still like reeling from, the information about him being Vader's son. Mm-hmm. So he's still struggling with that. Um, Lando shows up and says, I can take you um, to back to cloud city and we can go find your lightsaber. Cause I know where it is. And I think Luke has like this vision of this figure in dark cloak and he's got his lightsaber. So okay. um, that was the only reason why I picked it up. It was to find out where the hell the lightsaber came from. Um, well, otherwise, well, that's the thing. You know, in Return of the Jedi, he made his own. Yeah, he did make his own. But yeah. remember that his old lightsaber shows up in The Force Awakens. True. And that's they never how explained Maz, how it got there, yeah. Yeah, Maz Kanata got that lightsaber somehow. So we never got to find out where, what happened to it. Um, as I understand it, in the first draft that J.J. Abrams wrote, mm-hmm. it was supposed to open with 
the lightsaber and Luke's chopped off hand floating through space. Oh, damn. that was like you were going to see like Star Wars, the, 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 the crawl. Mm-hmm. And you know how it's always in space. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to pan down. You're going to see a, a Luke severed hand with the lightsaber. Oh, and wow. it would get picked up by somebody. Um, that was the first draft. So that was the only reason why I picked this up because I heard that it, you know, that it dealt with Luke's lightsaber. So because I wasn't really feeling the first epi- uh, or the first uh, issue, because I just felt it was just retreading familiar territory that I. But I, I thought this is why I feel like I feel like they were retreading, but at the same time I thought they were trying to inter, uh, interject more concepts in it. Like I said, the Dameron's were in the first book. That admiral yeah. that was like super good at shooting people was interesting. So I thought they were going to explore those new characters, and I was. Hoping for that. Yeah. But it sounded like sick issue. They just destroyed yeah, all like, that stuff. Yeah, like the first issue, Luke is like all bummed out and shit. And, but Which now I he's got a new that, hand. Yeah. He got his new hand in this one. Okay. So it's like, it's like okay, now we're past the events of Empire, and it's like a new story. So now it's a, a new adventure. And I yeah, the, the Lando shit, all that shit was cool. Seeing Lando wheel and deal and – be a gambler and you know that that was cool so i give it a four out of five i i i i surprisingly had a good time with this i, I you know so okay all right so uh we were gonna talk about black stars next yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it because you got like 50 million books so i'm gonna just go with black <laughs> stars <laughs> okay so this is black stars number three the the finale this is three of three yep. this is it so last time we left off with the book uh, how Jordan was getting into it, in which he's parallax in this book. He got into it with Bezelbeth, whatever the name is, the, the yeah. vampire chick. And basically, they would get into an argument, and he realized that he brought, you know, Jonathan Kent aboard. But Superman already told him in the last book, if you, you know, you come near my son, we're going to wage war on you. And now that he recruited his son to the Black Star, Superman's like, fuck it, nope, we got to come. So he, he basically takes every metahuman that's on Earth that can fly, they can go to space, and they go and they just wage war on the Black Stars. And that's it, they just fight. But Bissabeth has a trick of her sleeve. She's been doing something to the Earth to make Superman weaker. So when Jonathan Kent and Superman fight, Jonathan actually kills him by accident. Because he's yeah. like, well, I thought he, he had was like the, like the headquarters was in inside the sun? Yeah, inside the sun. And it was draining the, the sun's sun. power? Yeah. So since it was draining the sun's power, it was draining Superman's power. But doesn't drain Jonathan Kent's power because he's a black star. Yeah. So that's why he was able to kill him. But the the cons, the the argument they were had was actually pretty interesting. Also, and I thought this was another you know uh, wink at the audience that Grant Morrison was doing. Like, why do you hate your kids? Is it because you're scared we're going to replace you? Because you keep doing the same thing over and over again. I thought that's what they keep doing in comics. Like, why don't they ever let again, the kids grow it, up? It's you know? Grant Morrison fucking with everybody. <laughs> exactly, but everybody just pays attention to it. But he's doing the same thing again. Like, uh. The kids don't grow up or the kids, though they never have kids to begin with, you know, or they're always the same age or why don't they ever let the kids replace the the parents, you know, things like that, you know. So I thought all that was pretty interesting. That was stuff that uh, Grant Morrison was throwing in there. Uh, but but Su- Superman died. Superman died, yeah. He was killed by his son. Like pretty easily too. It was like, <laughs> even John was like, damn, I was expecting to kill him. That's, I what I was, that's what I was like, dude, did you read Black Stars? You're like, <laughs> but I'm cool with Jonathan Kent with his own son. I'm sick of like Batman and Green Arrow and shit like that <laughs> fucking him up, you know. So, I'm cool with that. But yeah, so Superman dies. And when Superman dies, that's pretty much like, okay, they can pretty much take out every other metahuman fairly easy. So they all die pretty easily too. But they keep well, jumping in because yeah, the they all stars. join. Well, a lot of them end up joining the Black Stars. Yeah, because basically what Hadron said, like I recruited 8 million Black Stars, stuff like that. So everybody that's still on Earth that we didn't kill, they're going to join, join Earth. So basically he's trying to plead with them, don't blow up Earth because you need Earth. But she wants to kill Earth anyway. Uh, we cut to it. They find Mongol. Mongol is being tortured. And they chop his arms off and his legs off and all kind of shit like that because basically in the last book, they used him to kill one of the traitors. Basically, they, they want to eat one of the planets and they use Mongol like some kind of like rabbit attack dog shit like that. They control him just to fuck shit up. And they kill him so he can, can't get the information out. Hal Jordan has spies on the inside of there. They go back and tell the information what's going on. And they're like, yeah, she's crazy. She's going to eat this planet. After they're done, they're gonna eat Earth. She didn't care what you did with Earth. She's gonna, you know, finish it off. That's it. And and how Jordan keeps hearing these voices in his head that tell him that all this shit is fake, none of this shit is real. You were Hal Jordan, you were Green Lantern, but he didn't know where the voice is coming from. So he confronts Bezel Beth uh, in the room with the Miracle Machine, 
And she's like, why are you here in the mirror machine? You can't activate it. All the pieces you need to activate it are gone. You're like, all the pieces I need to activate it are right here. It's right there on your finger because you had the Green Lantern ring. You're like, this thing didn't even work. Like, it's, it's been dead for, for a long time. And matter of fact, it's from a universe that doesn't even exist anymore. So you're wasting your time. And so she tries to shock him just to kill him to be done with him. But if she shock him, she fucks him up, but doesn't kill him. She's like, how the fuck are you still alive? Like, the, the skin should be melting off your bones right now. And the reason she did, she didn't, she can't kill him is because the power she used turns the Green Lantern ring on. The Green Lantern ring is sucking the energy from her, but she needed her, the Green needed her to use her power first to do that. So to do that, it's powerful enough now to to trap her and put her in a in a, in a trap. And, and, the, and the ring was talking to. Hal. And the ring was talking to Hal Jordan the whole time. He finally realized that. So basically, what Hal Jordan says that the the wish he made with the Miracle Machine wasn't to erase his reality and replace it with this reality. What they did was find a dead universe, which is Universe 15, and erase that one. So Earth Prime has never been fucked with. It's still there just like it was before. It's never been touched. There's a whole new reality that she's living in right now and basically the best of both worlds. You can have this reality. You can do whatever you want to. Fuck up people up all you want to. There are no Green Lantern here. It's your planet. I'm going to go back to my universe and lock the door Blow up the miracle machine so you can't follow me. Because right she was wing. basically like Galactus. She feeds on planets. Yeah, basically. She, yeah, and that's the thing. She was just like, because uh, she just wants to just eat everything because she's a, just yeah. an insatiable vampire, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then she, and then Hal Jordan, like, bye. Use the ring, turns on the miracle machine, goes back to his universe, and she's stuck there. And then Moo the controller, Mew the controller, Mew or Moo? Yeah, Moo or Moo. Moo. Okay. Uh, Moo. Basically, <laughs> his his consciousness has been spread out through all hundred thousand ships, whatever they have, and he yeah, because they said his his body wasn't they like his mind couldn't be uh, in one body, mm -hmm. so they thought she thought he was dead, like his mind died because they couldn't contain him in one body. Right, but it turns out he was in. They needed thousands or millions of bodies. Yeah, and so he's been in all the ships, you know. Yeah, so he's been. Yeah. And he shows up like I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna treat, teach you humility, and she's like, yeah. "Damn you, Hal Jordan!" And then the book ends. So, yeah. So basically, nothing in this book matters, but it's still cool. It was just a cool book. Yeah, it's just it, Grant Morrison flexing his his muscles, you know, and just fucking with everything. And like one thing, I, that that one panel, and I just want to read it because I thought it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what, Leroy's gonna love this shit. <laughs> Back after like Superman dies, you know. Which I thought was fucked up. I thought his, you know, his own son killed him, you know, with ease. You know, right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was fucked up. And then they recruit basically all the all the heroes on Earth or all the metahumans basically become black stars, except for like a few, the rich elite. You, oh, you know? I forgot about that. I forgot about that because they show them. Lex yeah. Lut yeah, Lex Luthor, Batman, Ra's al Ghul. Like, and it, I, I just want to read that panel. You know, the, it's like, of course, there was resistance. You know, the heroes that would not um, join the Black Stars. And, and this is Grant Morrison. Rich men, reclusive, self-made masterminds on unrepentant socio or unrepentant sociopaths who feared the loss of their now irrelevant fortunes, their awards and privileges, their special entitlement to squander the resources of a world they'd been assured was theirs. Striking from chilly, screenlit caverns, creeping through bleak shadows, fighting for their right to stay the same forever in a changing world. In the end, like all the monsters, they too would die in the light of a new dawn. And I they, just thought, there is so much we can pack there. Well, so much you can pack there, but I'm not going to go there, Eli. There's so much I could say, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was like Leroy's gonna love that. Shit. I did love that panel when I read it. I was like, "Ooh, I, I see what you're doing, Grant Morrison. I see what you're doing." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Let's 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 rag on Batman. <laughs> yeah, and because he's teaming up with Lex Luthor, they're trying to. Uh, I'm not gonna yeah. go there. I'm not gonna go there. Yeah. But the panel before <laughs> that, uh, basically was saying the reason they went there because when they took over the planet Earth, they were like, "Okay, we're gonna do away with money. No longer is yeah. relevant." property yep. is no longer relevant so all the stuff that you know they relish because of classism is gone yeah you know like i said that's all i'm gonna touch on that i'm, I'm gonna leave that alone <laughs> i just thought oh yeah they're yeah Le uh, leroy's gonna like it because uh grant morrison's basically saying batman's a fucking billionaire asshole 
Have you been noticing what I've been doing on our fan page? I don't think anybody's been paying attention to what I've been doing. Okay. <laughs> so on our fan page, you know, I've been posting like the Black Heroes History Month every every day. Yeah. But people haven't known that each panel I've been posting, I've been shitting on Batman the whole time. Yeah, I saw. I, I, I didn't notice that. <laughs> I know you noticed it, but I don't know if anybody else caught that. Batman book, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like first one, Bronze Tiger kicking the shit out of Batman. Next one, John Stewart, you know, bitching out Batman. Tomorrow I got Aunt Amanda Waller bitching out Batman also. So spoiler. <laughs> Uh yeah. Uh, overall, I'm, I'm gonna give the book a four out of five because, like I said, it's it's meaningless to continuity because it's really outside of continuity. But it's just yeah. like I said, it gives Grant Morrison because Grant Morrison is free from continuity. He can do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Yeah, and that's what I like. I liked it so much. I was like, I don't I need to know what's going on with Year the Villain or whatever the fuck or what's going on in the Justice League. Just give me a cool story. Hey, at this and it's, 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 like he didn't even know what the fuck was going on with this shit. Like he didn't care. Yeah. And it was, it, it, he was just basically using this as to comment on the state of comics right now and, and the tropes and the tired, recycled ideas. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was funny. It, I was laughing my ass off a lot of it, but it was still a crazy, weird ass story. Which yeah. we expect from him. Like, you wouldn't expect anything less. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I loved it. So, yeah. Um, uh, like, I'm booked out. So, I'm, the rest of the show is yours. <laughs> I don't care. I I read so much crap that I don't care about. Like that Weapon Plus. Eh, it was Man Thing being used being used as some government experiment. Um, got a little too preachy on the environmental tree hugging shit. And then at the end, there's like some story called the uh, Brute Force or something or Brute Squad or Wait, Brute Force is back? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. I never even heard of these motherfuckers. Hey, was was it like a dog, dolphin and a... It was like a dolphin and, and a, a kangaroo? And a bunch of animals. That, Holy fuck. You you shitting me. No. But okay. it seemed like it was like Captain Planet and shit. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. It was a Captain Planet ripped off back then. And, and, and Ninja Turtles also. Yeah. I was like, eh, I didn't give a shit. Oh, man. Brute Force is back. I got to read that. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, you could. <laughs> 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 uh, Jessica Jones. Um... I liked the first issue. This one I didn't. You know, I was expecting a cool, hard-boiled detective story. This one, it's a bunch of Avengers. Captain Marvel's in it. Doctor Strange is in it. You know, I'm like, what the really putting some muscle behind Jessica Jones? Why is that? I like, well, I just wanted her. You know, her being cool and I just like, like, why now? Why, why? I don't know. Yeah. Like not Luke Cage, not did Jessica Jones. But last issue, she was shot. And you, you know, somebody shot her in the head. And then she wakes up in the hospital, and mm-hmm. Luke Cage is there. Oh, honey, you're alive. And then all the rest of the Avengers are there, too. And, and then it finds out that someone's going around trying to kill uh, superhero chicks. And that's basically what's happening. Um, what else did I read? Oh, Detective Annual was all right. Um, basically, a. Uh, uh, Alfred centric story. We, we, we deal with, uh, Alfred's past as, as a spy. So that okay. was pretty cool. Um, yeah, that was all right. Yeah. Detective annual was cool. Damn, you like, and did then, your refund check come in or something? Like, shit. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, Oh shit, shit. I mean, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I can't like, I'm bored these days. I'm can't fucking go anywhere. So I was like, I'll load up on the comics and read shit. Hey, I've, I've been there. I've been there before I, too. Yeah, I'm like, and but a lot of them, like, I didn't care. You know, I, I spent a lot of money. There's a few more books I read that I didn't just whatever. Hey, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like I said, it was it was a busy week. It was a busy week. It was the fifth week of the month, so yeah. Um, well, like I said, if you got no more, I guess we can wrap this bad boy up. Yeah, um, um. <laughs> yeah. like I said, if you listen this long, uh, definitely like, share, and subscribe. Uh, this is to our sister podcast, uh, Comic Cast. Wait, not Comic Cast. They're our sister podcast. They have sister podcast now. Yeah. <laughs> Brother from another mother. Go listen to them. Listen to our other podcasts that, you know, uh, well, uh, listen to them to see what they thought about the books that we talked about. Uh, listen to our sister podcast, Geeks Half, also. Uh, hell, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Instant Destruction. We got them. Mm-hmm. Damn, we realize that it? Because all of a sudden we blinked and all of a sudden no other podcasts are here. Yeah, get valiant. Right? They, they're gone. I don't think we have them anymore. Well, they're on Hoodoo or something or something. I don't we know. don't have Hoodoo. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, like, so get Valiant isn't on. Isn't part of Outright Geekery anymore? I don't know. 
I didn't got to talk to Gomer about that. I don't know what the hell's going on. Oh. I didn't get the memo. We need to have like a, a meeting or something. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, and buy our merch. We have merch. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. be promoting on that. Uh, yeah, we got hoodies, hats, everything, condoms, t-shirts. <laughs> um, yeah. Socks, so underwear, <laughs> coke mirrors, brown <Brian> pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! And I guess that's pretty much it. So next week we're gonna do uh not a Harley Quinn episode, but we're gonna talk about Harley Quinn. And kind of go from there. Whatever other weird shit that came out then, we're going to talk about that. Uh, next week after, I don't know what's going to happen. I'll talk to you, Eli, off air, and we'll see what we're going to do about that because something might be happening. But until then, this is Leroy. This is Eli. We'll talk to you guys next week. Same bully time, same bully channel. Kobe. <laughs> Get this bad boy off. And... Oh. oh, shit, it's still going. There we go. Whoop. Streaming. Yes.